Hi, if you're a first time buyer and you have got limited amount of deposit, um, the government is toying with bringing back help to buy. So we're gonna talk about this, in this video, we're gonna really talk about help to buy mortgages, what, what happened with help to buy, some of the reasons help to buy was invented, some of the things that happened with help to buy, my thoughts on the government news with help to buy coming back. So do watch it, like and subscribe as always, and I'll see you on the video. Hi everybody, hope you're well. Right, let's talk about the news that the government is playing around, flirting with bringing back help to buy. Now, just to make it very, very simple, help to buy was a government scheme that was introduced. It was actually help to buy one and help to buy two, um, which essentially the help to buy one was a 95% mortgage at the time and the 5% was guaranteed by the government. And then uh, the, then there was help to buy two, which was the new build, which is the original, which is now the help to buy that we saw, which was basically for the new build side of things, 20% or 40% government loan and the additional 5% from the applicant. So what's going on? Well, basically the government, it was in the Times and newspaper, the government's thinking about reintroducing help to buy. Why I wonder. Now I've been on the record about help to buy. Um, uh, and I've got my own opinions on this, and I'm going to tell you all of my what I think as a broker, as someone who has dealt with help to buy, as someone who fairly understands help to buy uh, and and the the, the reasons behind it, um, to give you my impression of what what I think, my thoughts on it. However, I will also touch on what other people have been saying about help to buy because it's really interesting. So, to, you know, when when the news broke, there's a lot of obviously broker communities. There's a lot of brokers within the sector. We've got trade publications, and there's been a discussion out there. And some brokers are for it and others are against it. And so let's talk about why people, why some people are for it and some people are against it. And I'll tell you what I am. In my opinion, the brokers that are for it basically know where they're, which side of the bread they're, it's buttered. Basically, they've got, um, they've got skin in the game. They've got an interest in it. Now, there's a lot of brokers that are tied to the new build sector. What that means is they work in conjunction with um, developers and they are potentially their recommended brokers. So they have done very, very well over the years out of help to buy because the developers were very, very good shrewd salespeople. They were referring these help to buy new inquiries to their own independent brokers. Remember, when you had to go and buy a property, they would say, they always say, Oh, we've got to get you vetted out by our own people. Uh, we don't trust you. You know, we, we've got to get you vetted out. So anyway, those people did very, very well. They made millions, right, out of Help to Buy. So of course, when Help to Buy win, that sort of that ship has sailed. So um, they, of course, they're up for it. So they're lobbying for for that side of things. But the general average broker didn't really do that much out of Help to Buy. Um, and fundamentally, the, it comes down to what their thoughts are. They didn't really do well. I mean, we, we did a few cases. We did some cases on Help to Buy, but we weren't a prolific Help to Buy business writer, okay? So what you find is those people, the majority of brokers, are actually probably not uh, too keen on Help to Buy. Now, where do I sit? I actually sit in the second camp. The people that are not too keen on help to buy. I've never been really keen on help to buy. I have sure I've, I've offered it for clients and we've done help to buy mortgages in the past. And I'll tell you why. The reasons around help to buy and the reason it was, I, in my opinion, um, it was an unsustainable thing. And the reason I think it got phased out. And the reason is essentially you've got someone on day one who cannot afford that property. They can't afford it. Whether they're going to get a 20% government loan whether they're getting a 40% government loan and they're putting their 5% deposit down. On day one, they're telling you, I can't afford that property, okay? I can only afford 75% of it or 55% of it. Imagine that. What's the point of having all these affordability rules, all these documentation checks, all these affordability calculators for different lenders when you've got a scheme which essentially on day one, you know, they cannot afford it. And they couldn't afford it on a 1.5% rate. Now, what's the rate? 4.5%, 5%? They can't afford it still. And the government was banking for the property prices to go, increase, which to be fair, they did. But also, for interest rates to remain low, because you've got these people that are heavily indebted now to the government. 
as well as you've got the higher interest rates. So they're coming out to a, you know, on a two year fixed or five year fixed, they're coming out to higher mortgages. So that's my problem. My problem is I don't think, and help to buy should have been labeled, help my friends who are builders, help my donors that contribute to, I don't know, the conservative party, help those people. Because what that done is in, you know, overpriced, new build properties have been uh, have been made okay so that's what it is the reality is you know the property price has to be now the, the the truth of it is we need the property market to be stable there's been this target of 300,000 houses built a year which I don't believe they've ever hit and they've just talked about it it's just PR crap so what's going to happen? They've got these donors that are helping them. They're going to take they, they, their share prices are going to take a tumble because there's no help to buy. No one's buying it. Affordability is tight. Interest rates have gone up, and and something needs to be had. Something needs to be done. And I agree, something needs to be done. Okay, so I will talk to you about what I think should. If you're going to go down that route, then I'll tell you what is going to, what needs to be done. But those those are the issues. So and I know the government cannot allow the property prices to tumble. Okay, that's in a, even in a Labour government, even Gordon Brown back in the 2007, 2008, he stood up and said, I will not let the property prices drop. I will secure because essentially people are getting poorer. L lifestyles are getting worse. Let's be honest. It's not got better as it over the last few years. Right. But what has happened is property prices have gone up. So those people who are paying double utility bills, triple utility bills, they are paying a much higher council tax. They are paying living costs. They're paying for things that they never used to pay for. You know, mobile phone every two years now. You know, broadband charges and, you know, Sky TV and Netflix and this and that. So well, there's all these additional costs. But what they can, they can bear with that if their property price has gone up. They can't bear with it if property prices are coming down and all of this other stuff is happening as well. So the government understands that. So they will do anything, anything to make that work. As someone who's got an interest in this business, as someone who makes a living out of property prices, whether they go up, whether they go down, people actually need to buy. But, you know, let's be honest. It's in my interest, the property prices to be stable going up, you know, as a business, as a business person. But I understand how it works. And how it works is that at the moment, they're seeing, oh my God, we're going to have a problem building those houses because the developers are, stock prices will get hit. They can't reinvest that property. They're not selling overpriced prices. And if they were, if they had people that were wanting to buy, they can't afford them. They can't afford them, right? They can't afford the deposits. They can't afford the rates. They can't afford the affordability. So something needs to happen. So if that's the case, if you're going to fudge affordability, right? If you are going to put one rule for a batch of people, and another rule for a whole load of people. That's what you're essentially doing with help to buy. Okay, you could sell it as, you know, first time buyers, blah, 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 need to get on the property ladder, fine. But if you're gonna do that, you might as well just say, if you've got 25% deposit, whether it's a gift from family or whatever, we'll just work out affordability on 75% loan to value. The old days used to be self-certification mortgage. If you had 25% deposit, basically they didn't even run affordability. Now, my view is affordability is good. Affordability should be there. Affordability is a reason why we're not getting huge repossession figures right now because the lending that was done post-2007-2008, um, the regulatory environment around it was tightened up and there were more stringent tests if affordability, if rates went up, if rates went up to this, if rates went up to that. And that's what the lenders were doing when they're coming back to their clients and saying, you can't afford this, you can afford this. And the clients were going, well, I can afford my rent. I've been paying my rent for 10 years. But the lenders would say, yeah, but, you know, we've got to work out what the interest rates are. Now, there is an argument, and I think there's a, it's a valid argument. If you've been paying your rent for the last five years or six years or a couple of years, there's no rental void. You've got a tenancy agreement or you've got a state agent backing it up. Why shouldn't you put that towards, you know, your credit why shouldn't you be able to do something around the deposit side of things? Why can you not be offered various things? If you've been affording your rent higher than what the mortgage payments are, there should be uh, uh, more uh, gearing towards that. 
So I'm up for that. But if you're going to make one rule for the others, do it where, okay, 75% loan to value, good credit report, good tra track record, good job, income multiples up to four and a half, five times income, that's doable, okay? Go down that route. Don't go down people that cannot afford it. If, if you're saying these groups of people can't afford it, they can have a mortgage, but these groups of people, they must be able to afford it. It's a whole sham out of the whole, the whole system, okay? What's the point? Um, anyway, that's my views on it. Let me know what your thoughts are. And um, yeah, let's let's see what happens. But let me know about what your feelings are around this. Am I way off? I mean, I've got people that have done very well out of Help to Buy. But am I, um, am I basically on the, on the same script as you guys? Or do you think there is, you know, I'm wrong? Take care. The content of this video does not constitute giving advice. It's purely for information purposes. All cases should be discussed with a professional mortgage broker. As a mortgage is secured against your home or property, it could be repossessed if you do not keep up mortgage payments. Niche advice is authorized and regulated by the Financial Conduct Authority.